Hi my tubies, my Teletubbies, it's me Sheila. I'm using a different camera as you probably can uh, notice. I know I don't look all that great, but like I said, it's not what a person looks like. It's the message that's most important. And what we are talking about uh, is part seven, a closer look at Jehovah's Witnesses inside their world. And we are getting ready to talk with a Jehovah's Witness testimonies of why it is so dangerous to become one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And, um, you know, we're going to uh, uh, tr go into the, the dangers of becoming a Jehovah's Witness. I was sitting up here thinking about uh, my son and my daughter. You know, I already said, uh, hold on a moment. How uh, I have been recently having uh, issues when it comes to my son. My son... Uh, It was just traumatizing for me. That's the, the the only way I can put it. When it comes to the latest developments between my son and I, you know, uh, I have to go into details and let you know the reason why, first of all, why does my daughter hate the air I breathe and the very planet that I'm on? <sighs> you have to keep in mind. No, we actually don't have to keep anything in mind, but I'm going to share this with you. It <clears throat> The reason my daughter... And I have issues and she actually hates me is because my daughter, she likes uh, people who are very passive. She likes people who are very um, mousy. I don't have a mousy personality. If you've seen any of my previous videos, I am not a mousy floor mat uh, don't stand up for yourself. Don't speak up for yourself type of female. I will speak up for myself. I am, I'm not aggressive, but I am assertive. I have a very healthy self-esteem. If you, uh, take a look at, uh, my videos, you'll see that I am a, 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 a lady who is very confident. I have everything that my daughter lacks. My daughter, she tends to lean more towards or look for people who are very, I wish that I was her. I don't wish that I was my daughter. My daughter is not the type of female that I admire. I admire people like Joyce Myers, um, Priscilla Shire, uh, Felicia Rashad, um, uh, Michelle Obama. I have women that I admire. And a lot of these women, they all, I think most of them are married. So it's not like, oh, you're jealous because I'm married and you're not. Honey, I've been married, what, twice? Engaged to be married a third time? So it has nothing to do with anything like that. And it's not hard for any woman to go out there and get a husband, pick a man up off the street and pay his bills. Who can't do that? Pick a man up off the street and let him throw you a crumb every now and again. He give you crumbs every time he gets paid so he has more than enough money to take care of his two side pieces on the side. What woman on the planet can't go out there and get a man? I'll pick up a dude. You know what I mean? But the reason why I personally feel I could be wrong, but the message that she has sent out to me, and keep in mind, I raised her for 20 years. Okay? 20 years. And I've noticed how insecure my daughter is. She's always been very insecure. She doesn't like to see anybody else who can shine. If you can shine, she's not feeling you. That's called catty. Meow, meow, meow. Whatever. Eh. I don't even go around trying to shine. I just be true to Sheila. That's what I do. And if I happen to shine, what can I tell you? Oh, I don't want you to come to my wedding because you're going to make it all about you. Oh, I don't want you here to show up because uh, you're going to outshine me. Honey, I don't go nowhere trying to outshine no woman. I don't care about all that nonsense. And if you don't believe me, just check out my videos, Tubies. My previous ones. You can see where my head is at. So I was laying in my bed and I was thinking, wow, you know, the reason why my daughter, she sticks with this Jehovah's Witness organization is because she feels that it helps her to justify the really, I mean, I'm telling you, you have never seen nobody treat their mother so poorly the way my daughter treats me. And the more my son talks to her and associate with her, this is what I've noticed. He started to pick up that nonsense too. But Lewis has always been very 
weak when it comes to Samara, his, his sister, because psychologically, they are emotionally the same, emotionally sensitive, overly sensitive, and just whatever. But um, sticking to the fact of why becoming a Jehovah's Witness is so dangerous, I just wanted to put that out there from the beginning because I was just laying there, just meditating. You know how you turn off all the TV, you turn off the music, you turn off everything, you turn off the lights, and you're, usually I like to sit before my fireplace. I have, you know, on YouTube, you can put the fireplace on, and then it's just the kindlings burning. And while you land in the darkness with just the fireplace, you get a, a beautiful area to just meditate. And I kept saying to myself, why is it that my daughter, this girl can't stand the, 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 the air I breathe, the planet that I'm on. And I thought about it and I went deep and deep and deeper. And then I said, I see, I have everything that she's not. You see, I have a healthy self-esteem. My daughter has no self-esteem. She needs some dude to validate her, to tell her that she's worth something. If it's not coming from some, some I don't even call them men, some male, she's worthless, according to her. And then I laid there and I thought about several things that she had said to me. If you weren't my mother, I wouldn't have anything to do with you. And when did she say that? She said that when we were watching something, it was on television. I think it was like, uh, it was something with a man, woman type situation. And I stated my viewpoint on the way this woman is allowing this man to just dog the hell out of her. And then my daughter, she was like, oh yeah, ma, she was battling against me. She didn't see it my way because she believes that women are supposed to put up with abuse. She believes that women are supposed to be submissive because that's what the Bible says. But the Bible says to be obedient to your parents. She don't care about that part. She don't really care about that. Oh, what does that, screw that. Okay, but she, uh, then we had, our, we were in the middle of our family meeting because we usually had family meetings on Saturday. And I was listening to her and her brother talk at this family meeting, and she said certain things that I didn't agree with. And I said my feelings towards it, and that's when she said, if you wasn't my mother, I wouldn't have anything to do with you. And I was like taken aback by that. Really? Okay. I was hurt, but I didn't show it. I didn't show it because I, I'm just, I, that's just Sheila. <laughs> And I figured also because she's young, she's young and she's foolish. She does, she doesn't have a, a real really, honey. If you had any common sense, I am what you would be looking for as your best friend. Trust me when I tell you. But anyway, she was foolish. So she wasn't that young though. She was past eighteen. She was I think eighteen and a half. She was eighteen or some eighteen. So she was, uh, uh, whatever, that's not an adult, 30, 30s, when you look, long story. But no, when she said that to me, of course, I was hurt by that. And um, when she had said that to me, she was 18 or 19 or something like that. But she had just gotten hurt by this guy named Carlton. Carlton, uh, whatever, long story with that. I'm not going to go into details. And every time, you know, these kids get hurt, they want to take it out on their parents. My son is the same way. People start blocking him all on Facebook and blocking him everywhere. He, he, he First person he takes it out on is me because he feels that I'm going to put up with it. You see, he can't take it out on other people because other people are going to rip him a new one. My daughter also. So I was the closest thing that they could take things out on. But they can't do that to me no more. I'm not putting up with it anymore because, you see, they were taking me for granted. But I'm not putting up with it anymore. And I, I also got to say, let me stick to the point, the reason why my son and my daughter have a lot of their way of thinking is because they have because of this Jehovah's Witness organization. When it comes to, you know, with Jehovah's Organization, you're not allowed to disagree with them. They will shun you. You're not allowed to have your own viewpoint. They will shun you. You're not allowed to... Um, behave a certain, they will shun you. And being a part of this Jehovah's Witness organization, it is very, very dangerous and it's harmful. But you know, I wanted to make this video just to get it out there about my relationship with my daughter, with my son, Jehovah's Witnesses, and, and how Jehovah's Witnesses, 
when I think about it, and I was laying there, like I said, in front of the fireplace, and I was like meditating strongly. <laughs> and I, I, I came to a lot of conclusions, and, and it made sense. But anyway, without further ado, I'm going to let you listen to Jehovah's Witness testimonies. This is someone who has made an excellent point. Why becoming a Jehovah's Witness is so dangerous. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Um, today, we're going to be discussing something very serious, very delicate, and very, very, very important. If you are studying with the Jehovah's Witnesses organization, if you I put that on pause for a moment because I'm hoping you could see this. This is excellent, man. I want you to see this information because it talks about he taking a firm stand on the medical use of blood uh, fractions and procedures. And it just so shows how from 1940, blood fractions were acceptable. And then when it came to the 1956 in the awake September 8th, how it was not acceptable. It went from yes, and then it went to no, and then check this out, 1958, from 1956 to 1958, now they're saying, yes, it is acceptable, and that's in their watchtower, September 15, 1958, page 557, okay, and then it went from the yes, now, this is what I'm freaking out about, they went from yes, no, yes, no, I'm going to tell you how many times they changed their mind on this one. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Ten times they changed their mind up on this. It, 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 it is right here. Check this out. It's called Why Becoming a Jehovah's Witness is So Dangerous by uh, Jehovah's Witness Testimonies. Ten times you don't went from the light to the dark to the light to the dark. Really? This is ridiculous. You know, they switched up from 1940. Then they switched again in 1945. Then they switched again in 1956. And then they switched again um, in September 1958. And then they switched again to 1961. Then 64. Then 75. Then 78. Then 1990. And then the final decision was uh, 2004 where yes, you can partake of at least if it's blood fractures. Come on now, that's 10 times. Proverbs chapter four, the reason why they justify their constantly uh, changing up on their teachings. Again, this is redonkulous. Forget about ridiculous, redonkulous. Anyway, listen in, because I'm just listening to this. I'm, I'm kind of mentally exhausted. I myself, I'm exhausted. And I thank God for my meditation moments. I take time to meditate. I do. That's why you've seen some of my videos. I have the fireplace going or I have uh, the fish. You know, I have the fish tank. You can get all of that on YouTube. Just put it on your TV, turn off all the lights and everything is darkness. And it's perfectly for meditation to give yourself time to think things through. <sighs> Plan on becoming a baptized Jehovah's Witness or if you're a current Jehovah's Witness, like I am. I'm an inactive witness, but I'm a good witness in good standing nonetheless. See, this is a PIMO, a PIMO, P I M O, uh, physically in, mentally out. He's not this fellowship. He's within good standing of the congregation. That's why you, you hear his voice. It sounds kind of like robotic a little bit because he's hiding, but he's still in good standing. But this is how he really feels. He feels like so many of the people who you see in the organization feel physically in, mentally out. They're only hanging out in there so they don't lose their family and the people that they have grown accustomed to. I'm not going to even call those things friends. Okay? But anyway, let's listen further. But this is just one more reason why it's so dangerous. It's so incredibly dangerous to become a Jehovah's Witness. 
And I say that with all maximum value because I have many, many friends that are still Jehovah's Witnesses. But as you can see here, I have a document yeah. that was compiled about different teachings and over the years from the Jehovah's Witness leaders. I've highlighted this one specifically on the blood, the use of blood. And I just want to go over a few things and then we're going to consider an article, one of the many, many articles online about brothers and sisters dying because of these rules and policies that the Jehovah's Witness leaders impose on their members and say that they come from the Bible. But as you will see in this document, perhaps you've already read it, as I've been speaking, it, it's impossible that these come from the Bible because the Bible doesn't change. God does not change. And certainly if the Jehovah's Witness organization, the leaders claim to be a spirit-led organization, how is it possible that it, these changes have been made time and time again. But let's look. Taking a firm stand on the medical use of blood fractions right. procedures. Back in 1940, the magazine Consolation was actually, it's actually the Awake magazine that we have today, okay, which is this one here. But back in 1940, blood transfusions were acceptable, and that can be found in the 1940 Consolation, the December issue. And you can take note of this. This is a huge document, document which covers many, 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 many teachings that have been reversed, that have been, have gone back and forth, okay? And it highlights and references all the publications where you can find these, and it's uh, pretty shocking. But the reason I'm talking about the blood fractions is because this here specifically deals with an individual's life. That's right. Notice here in 1945, the blood transfusions were accept are not acceptable now. Right. Right. But yet, back in 1940, just five years prior, they were acceptable. And God somehow deemed them acceptable. I guess the spirit changed his mind. I'm not sure. And I say that with all due respect. I say it with a very serious, serious uh, tone because it's basically what they're doing. Everything they say, the, the Jehovah's Witness leaders say they're not inspired, but yet they'll thank Jehovah for everything. You can't have it both ways, okay? And that's what people keeps people, you know, going to them, searching out this organization. But notice, this was the, this is not, they were not acceptable. They became unacceptable in the Watchtower of 1945, the January edition, okay? And then we move on to clotting factors, okay? So the blood transfusion from 1945 and on were not acceptable. If you happen to have an accident prior to 1945 and a blood transfusion was available in your locality and you were fortunate enough to accept one, to have one available, then you were saved. Blood transfusions were not very common back in these days, That's right. but they were available nonetheless in many different cities states but they were just not as common but as you will see here the years continue and the clotting factors albumin hemoglobin stored blood and other things somehow god deemed in the awake of september 8 1956 that they were not acceptable these clotting factors were not acceptable okay Okay, two years later, the Spirit of God changed his mind, 
and God changed his mind again and wrote in the Watchtower, the September 15th, 1958, that they were acceptable. As a matter of fact, there's a quote here. An individual is not disfellowshipped for having voluntarily taken a blood transfusion. And this is actually the same year, except this is from August. This was a, you know, I'm not quite sure what QFR means. Could be the qu a quarterly report or something. Perhaps the, the, um, the ministerial, the, 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 uh, I, I don't really know, I'll tell you the truth, but this was written in the 58, and uh, I'll find out what this is and put it in the description. But nonetheless, here it says yes, and here this one agrees. And then two years, three years later, God changed his mind again and said no. Blood clotting factors are not acceptable, and they published this in the Watchtower September 15th, 1961. So God again changed his mind. The spirit changed his mind because they've always been a spirit led organization. So you can't claim one and then say, oh, no, 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 we're imperfect men just trying to do the will of God. It doesn't work that way. When you say you're breaking a law of God, you're asserting authority, that you have it on authority that you're saying this based on some sort of authority. And you use the Bible for that. The Jehovah's Witness leaders use the Bible. But somehow, strangely enough, the whatever spirit led them to conclude that no, then they become yes here again. And three years later, it changed, they changed their mind again. God changed their right. mind, I guess. The spirit must have backtracked somehow. And back in the Watchtower of November 15, 1964, then all of a sudden the bloody, uh, fact, the, the, the clotting. Do you see the point that he's making here? They actually go from no, and then yes, and then no, and then yes, no, yes, no, yes. Come on, like 10 times. And they honestly want us to believe that this is coming from Jehovah. And the reason why, I'm gonna name this video actually, why it is so dangerous becoming a Jehovah's Witness. It's dangerous because you're playing with people's lives. You're talking uh, Jimmy Jones type thing. You're talking about Mormons and Scientology and you're talking about cults. And that's the reason why I decided to, you know, make this video because becoming a Jehovah's Witness, yes, it is very, very dangerous. Okay, so I had to just forward it a bit. Uh, like I said, why becoming a Jehovah's Witness is so dangerous. You could check out from Jehovah's Witness testimonies and listen in if you want the full thing because I don't want to try to go over the, uh, you know, over the time. But let's listen in further. It's where they say they don't speak for God, but yet they thank God, and thereby the members just believe that he came from God. Here, this was last year, November of 2017. CBC.ca News. Refusal of blood transfusion key to deaths of two Jehovah's Witnesses coroner finds. The patients, both mothers of newborns, died within week, within a week of each other of childbirth complications. These two lovely ladies were Jehovah's Witnesses. Merland Cadet here and Eloise Dupuy here. And it says, the caption says, they died within a week of each other from complications related to blood loss after giving birth. Both women were Jehovah's Witnesses, a religion that forbids blood transfusions. Think about that. These women gave birth to a child they carried for nine months. And now those children will never hear 
their mother's voice. Yeah. That's sad. Uh, Flip flop teachers. It breaks my heart. Yeah. But it goes back to this nonsense. Yep. Yeah. Yes, no, this back yes, and no, forth yes. of these Jehovah's Witness leaders that play with people's lives. If you're uninspired, say so. Don't play semantics, word semantics, okay? Because these are actual people that are dying. Let's go through the through the document here. A Quebec coroner has found that the refusal of blood trend the Jehovah's Witness organization is banned in Russia. And other countries. Because they take the leaders, the governing body, discreet slave, however you want to address them. They take away a person's self-preservation instinct. In other words, they strip you of your <coughs> choice of wanting to survive as a human being. It's no different than what Jim Jones did in Jonestown. Thank you. Guyana. Where mothers purposely poisoned their babies at the behest of Jim Jones, the cult leader. Tell me, is there a difference That's when what I'm you're asking. willing to die because your leaders, the Jehovah's Witness leaders, are telling you that it's in the Bible, so it comes from God? Is there a difference? And that's the question I raised in my previous videos. What's the difference? When Jimmy Jones got these people and convinced them to drink the Kool-Aid. But, but at least he only killed, what, 900 and something? Jehovah's Witnesses have killed thousands. They've killed probably millions. Millions with this no organ transplant, no blood, whatever. It is a very dangerous cult. They have people sitting up there throwing away their families, man, for God's sake. It's ridiculous. The same thing that Jimmy Jones did. The same things that the Moonies do. Scientologists do. If you want to leave their organization or their group, you're going to throw away your family, throw away your friends, throw away your everything that you've grown accustomed to, your 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 everything that you were taught, your your world view, your whole world view. So it's gone. Simply because you don't want to sit up here and take care of Jimmy Jones. Or you don't want to take care of the Mooney's leader or the governing, the, the Jehovah Witness leaders. And why on earth having my children, uh, you know what, I'm not even going to go there. My kids are woke. They're woke. They're just scared. They're scared. Because that's what this organization, it puts in you, fear, fear. But guess what? They didn't put no fear in Sheila True Love. Because Jehovah God told me in the Bible, don't be afraid of them. Jehovah said, don't be afraid. They're not for me. They're not for me. No. Because life is being extinguished. Voluntarily, voluntarily, you are killing yourself or allowing yourself to die, in this case with blood transfusion. It's no difference. A life is lost. Like I said, the reason why my children are still with this nonsense, they are afraid um, of governing body. They are terrified that if I leave this organization, I'm going to end up a drug addict. I'm going to be an alcoholic. I'm going to end up homeless. I'm going to be all messed up. I left. I know I could have been an alcoholic. I've never, I was never an alcoholic, honey. I have limitations. There's something about my, me that my children don't understand. There's but so far your mother can go in life. I've experimented with drugs. I've experimented with this. I've experimented. I have limitations on me. Okay. Because I have morals. 
I have values. And more importantly, I have a love and a respect for Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. Like my children, like you will never understand, like you probably will never have. I have limitations. Drinking problem? Went there, did that, handled the situation. Listen to me when I tell you, Tubies. She the true love? I might drink once a month. Tops. Let me tell you, tops. My roommate could vouch for me. Tops, maybe twice a month. And I don't even drink around my roommate. The only time you'll see me having cocktails is if I'm being social. And that's what, once a month? Mainly once or twice a month. Would you call that someone who's an alcoholic? And the only way I drink like that is if I am, you know, like if I'm doing like video chat with somebody and they're drinking and then I'll say, hold on, are we hanging out? You know, like I'm sitting here talking to you now, but if we're doing video chat and you, we, we party like that, or if I'm on tagged, or if I'm hanging out on one of these other video chat things, that's, uh, that's it and that's all. And I drink normally in, in the privacy of my home. When I am outside socializing, I don't overdo it outside because I can't afford to do that outside. It's normally when I'm in my home that I tend to overdo it at times. And a lot of times, sometimes I have overdone it because I have been hurting so badly because of what this organization has done to my family and because of my world's belief, my world, everything I believed in, man. Do you think my son and daughter have the capacity to understand that? They don't. They don't. Nuts. I don't know. They don't understand it. They don't get it. But they want to tell me how they have great, in, in my intuition is so great, and my and I, I'm in tune to people. I can just feel things about people. No, you can't. You don't know a damn thing, Lewis and Samara. You don't. Because if you did, you would not be a part of this organization. Lewis, you're not even a part of it. You're straddling the fence like everything else you do. Whatever. Get off the fence, kid, and make a decision. No, because if you really had good intuition and your intuition intuition went off like beep, 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 you wouldn't be no part of this crap. Unless, of course, Satan really has that much of a hold on you. Does he really have that much of a hold on you? How? When I raised you to follow Jesus Christ and to worship Jehovah God, Yahweh, I didn't raise you to, to bow down to no governing body. And to no elders and no overseers. Anytime their teachings are not in harmony with that Bible. And I know when you go to those meetings and all of that, if you want to look, you want to go to the assemblies, go to the assemblies like I do. I never miss an assembly of Jehovah's Witnesses, but I do it through John Cedars and I do it through uh, XJW Examinator and Watchtower Examinator because they make sure they're sitting at those assemblies. They're making sure. But they're also making sure that you're not going to be brainwashed or indoctrinated. They're going to make sure you see things the proper way. So when people say, so how did you enjoy the assembly? How, when I see them at the, these, these carts and all that nonsense, how did you enjoy the assembly? I was like, it was, it was something. It was interesting. And I bring out the points. Bap, bap, bap. What happened at the assembly? They'd be like, oh, yeah, she, she, she was there. Yeah, I was. But through John Cedars and other people, you're not going to brainwash me or further indoctrinate Sheila, true love. I have too many people out here in the world that needs to be helped, honey. I don't have time to be mentally nut job. Don't have time for that. And like I said, the reason my daughter has issues with me is because I don't have a mousy personality, as you can see. I do stand up for myself. And I speak up for myself. And I am not a floor mat. Nor will I ever be, ever, ever. And those are the type of people that she tends to lean towards. Weak people, weak. She wants people to teach her how to be a wife. They've been married for 40 years. 40 years of being a floor mat, though. Listen to the ex-Jehovah Witness wives when they finally got out. Listen to them. They put up with all this crap, the same crap she puts up with her husband. Getting tickets all on the car. Don't even tell her about it. She's doing the financial heavy lifting in this goddamn house just to keep the peace. Her biggest thing, let me tell you his biggest weapon with my daughter. He does the silent treatment. The silent treatment he does with her because he knows she can't handle it. Me? Go ahead and do the silent treatment trick, nigga. I prefer you to shut the F up personally. 
because I got so many other things, people that I got to talk to. I got phone calls to return. I got books that I got to write. I got things that I need to quiet. And guess what? Go ahead and do your silent treatment trick because I'm out. I have other engagement. Thank God for meetups. See ya. She has her kids that she could talk to. Let him play that silent treatment bullery. He could never use that on me. That works on her because she needs this validation. Please tell me I'm worth something. Please, please, please tell me I'm worth something because I don't feel like I'm nothing if a dude ain't telling me I'm something. Oh, baby, that could never work on me. If anything, I'll have him begging to talk to me. When he finally do talk to me, I wouldn't say a goddamn thing to him. I'll pretend like I didn't even hear him. When he starts talking, I will get my, my earplugs, plug them in, and let, you know those audio books? Because I like reading, and I like knowledge. So I got my audio book, and I can't even hear you, son. So when you're ready to talk, you're irritating the hell out of me. Go back to the silent treatment. That works for me. Thank you. Anyway, this is She the True Love, Truly Loving You. And um, <laughs> really, that kind of nonsense don't work on me. That's childish. And if he does it to a point where it's getting on my last nerve, he'll come home and find his stuff packed at the door. Right out at the door. You don't even have, And I will make sure I have an order protection in place. Have that served to have the cops come so you can escort this clown out. You ain't got no, oh, you got to give them a month because they got squatters right? No, 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 no. You don't have to do all of that. You could get them suckers out the same goddamn day. Just go to the court. Don't tell them. Shh, shh. Get all protection. Tell them you don't feel safe. He's dangerous. All the above. But I'm ready to curse. You know me. Don't play that game with me, baby. I'm gonna sit up here and act all this nonsense, silent treatment. How old are we? Anyway, this is Sheila True Love. I just wanted to share this a brief point with you. Why becoming a Jehovah's Witness is very, very dangerous because it actually involves your life. Flip-flopping back and forth, they've killed more people than all the cults put together. Think of Jimmy Jones or all the other cults. Put them all together that have killed people and, and, and convinced people to kill their damn self. Jehovah's Witnesses have killed millions and they're continuing to do so. They're continuing to have people commit suicide because of the shunning. They're continuing to, with this busting up marriages and families and what? We don't need none of that. Don't have time for that now, do we? Anyway, this is Sheila True Love, truly loving you. And I will see you on the other side. This is, uh, I'm going to name this one different than the other one that I have. I'm definitely going to make this one. Why becoming a Jehovah's Witness is very, very, very dangerous. Because it is. You always have a choice. Please choose wisely, my tubies. I love you, as always. I'll see you on the other side. Bye for now.